Hey up and welcome to another edition of Barnsley Biker Video Diaries. I'm just sat outside Team Roberts at the minute. Um, just dropped, try and scramble off. It's ready for its first service and uh, I've got a bit of time to kill. So I'm going to get a spot of lunch. There's a, a burger wagon, uh, always in car park at Team Roberts and does some nice uh, sandwiches, baked butties, things like that. And uh, hopefully a cup of tea. And then uh, they've told me it'll be an hour and a half or so to uh, to serve its bike. So then we'll go for a bit of a ride, and I'll give you a bit of a a view on how it's going after the first seven eight hundred miles or so. I've gone slightly over mileage limit. Um, got bike booked in early as they could. They've been very busy here. Um, it's a popular dealership selling lots of bikes, lots of Triumphs, but a lot of used stuff as well. So, uh, yeah, the earliest they could get me in was today. Um, uh, but fingers crossed, it's not going to take them long to do it. There's got a couple of extras, hopefully, to fit. And uh, then we'll go for a spin and see how it goes. I was going to say, why do they always build castles on top of hills? That was a bit of a trek. But obviously, it's fairly obvious, so don't answer that question. But no, I decided to take a walk um, from Team Roberts up to one of the local historic uh, landmarks in Conisbury. Behind me, or to the side of me there, Conisbury Castle. Uh, what a beautiful spot to sit and chill, to be fair. Currently sat in what was the moat of Conisbury Castle. Uh, obviously, no water in it these days. Um, looking up at what's left of it. I'm going to get, go for a little walk after I've finished um, along the edge of the uh, outer bank of the moat and uh, let you have a look at the castle, have a walk round. But uh, I just thought I'd take a walk up here. Team Roberts is, is literally 10 minutes walk away from here. So I thought I'd just take a, a bit of a walk. It says lots of thistles. Take a bit of a walk up and uh, just have a quick intro. Uh, to, to this episode of Barnsley Biker Video Diaries um, as you probably realise I am enjoying the Triumph and no real gripes at the moment um, on the way back I'm going to do a commentary of the ride back and give you a bit more of a, a review of what I'm thinking of it uh, I think I've said most things um, and most things have been very positive there is one minor niggle shall we say and I think in one of my early early blogs I um, I mentioned that I actually rated the tyres um, the, the Metzler's Metzler Turrens uh, which usually get good reviews uh, from users and, and magazines etc and I'm not wanting to slag the tyre off as such because it actually the, the tyres are working very very well the issue I'm having um, is the front is white lining and sometimes quite alarmingly and it's a tyre that's done six seven hundred miles it's the sort of feedback you expect from a, a front tyre that's practically worn out uh, that's past it, it, its useful life shall we say uh, and usually an indicator that your tyre needs changing so i don't know if it's the size of the tyre the fact it's a tubed cross ply tyre um, compared with some of the bigger bikes that come with turrets as standard um, which run the radials don't know don't know what the issue is um, I check the tire pressures and the, the manual says um, basically 30 psi made sure I'd got that in no it didn't make much much of a difference I did increase the front tire pressure by 2 psi and that gave a bit of an improvement uh, it's not quite as violent um, and it's not picking up on some of the smaller irregularities on the road but it still does pick up on on the uh, the more obvious ones um, and sometimes you can be going into a corner and it will be trying to stand the bike up get beautifully smooth tarmac start swinging it through the bends no issue with the tires they, they actually are very confidence inspiring and i think um, maybe i'll have a look at the end of the ride but i've been close to the edge front and back uh, so i'm not uh, taking it steady and as i say you get a nice sweeping bend with decent uh, tarmac and the tyres are brilliant. It's just when you get a white line or a raised overbanding or a piece of road that's getting ready for repairing and yeah, the bike does start to uh, shimmy and slide a little bit. So just for now, I've got about an hour before the bike's uh, 
due to be finished down at, at Team Roberts. So uh, we're about 10, 15 minutes away. I'm just going to have a little wander along the moat, edge of the moat, and show you some of the castle. As you can see, we're not actually that far from the main road down there. It skirts around the castle, but you can almost sometimes ride, drive past, ride past, and not realise the castle's here because it's hidden by the trees and everything. Uh, but there it is. Like a, a lot of our British historical monuments, we've destroyed them over the years, various kings and, and, and political leaders, etc. For various reasons, um, our abbeys and castles were, were destroyed um, way back in our history. Um, after the, or during the English Civil War, Oliver Cromwell and his roundheads, to prevent these castles being used as strongholds, destroyed them, and that's what happened to Conisbury Castle here. Our abbeys and cathedrals, um, a lot of those were destroyed by Henry VIII. So, uh, yeah, we don't have that many intact historical buildings. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it looks like they've been doing some uh, clearing of what was the moat, and it's, it's quite impressive. You, you can't imagine having to, having to cross that moat and storm that uh, as a foot soldier. But... Uh, Yes, a couple of interesting features about Conisbra, as you can possibly make out from here. Um, it's a hexagonal tower keep, uh, and I think it's the only hexagonal keep in uh, this country, in the British Isles. So, uh, unusual in that respect. They did do a lot of work, uh, and I think we restored the roof and that, so there's a little bit of a, a visitor to experience in there. And I know during the, the school holidays, they do have lots of activities for kids um, to teach them about the history of the castle and the area. Uh, but the other interesting fact about Conisbra is, if you've ever read the book Ivanhoe, the castle is featured quite a lot in, in that book. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the book is set in this area. Um, and Lincolnshire, etc. So, yeah, Connorsby Castle features in that. Okay, I'm going to drop down onto the footpath and uh, just walk round and let you take in the splendour of the castle. Yeah, the moat over the years has probably got quite overgrown and they've been doing some, uh, some serious gardening by the looks of it. Anyway, yeah, just uh, such a beautiful area. I mean, we're somewhere between Rotherham and Doncaster. They're probably both less than 10 miles away. Um, the road down at the bottom that goes through to Lincoln, as I've just said, will take you back to Barnsley that way. Um, so we're in the middle of, of what was industrial South Yorkshire. But how peaceful and tranquil is it today? little bit of noise from the road but other than that all you've got are the birds singing hmm. okay okay I'm going to slowly uh, make my way around here and then back down to Team Roberts As these castles fell into disrepair and, and the abbeys that were demolished by Henry VIII, the stone was taken by local people to build the houses and the farms, etc. So the buildings were damaged, but over the years they've fallen further and further into disrepair. As I say, you will find if you were to explore the buildings around, there will be evidence that they've used stone that came from these walls to build their houses etc so yeah they see some uh, stone built houses which are quite possibly have been built by for, we're using the stone that came from the castle um, I'm speculating but I'm, I'm fairly certain that some of it will have been there are a lot of uh, stone quarries in the area as well so stone was quarried in this area quite uh, extensively okay first service all done gonna get kit on and set off home but first 
The unfortunate belly pad had not come, as you can see, a lamp uh, bezels fitted, looking good. So I'm going to take some at uh, back roads. It's what life's for, what bikes are for. On way home, hopefully have a decent ride. So yeah, let's get helmet on. Okay, let's get this show on the road. Get out of Connors, run onto the roads. This way, basically, Old Denneby. Through this uh, bit of an industrial estate. Then. Okay, so I said I was going to give you a bit of an update on, on my thoughts, etc., um, on the Triumph Scrambler. And as you probably already gathered, I am still really, really loving the bike. A um, couple of things that uh, to report back on um, issues that I've pointed out with some of my other bikes but um, I'm happy to report that on the Triumph they're not a problem um, the clock so far is keeping perfect time unlike my Ducati clock but similar to the Harley clock which kept good time from what I can tell by Roadside cameras, the speed is reasonably accurate, so uh, and easy to read again. Unlike the Harley, it doesn't mist up, doesn't steam up, and uh, everything is fairly fairly easy um, to read on the on the speedo. Um, the options for whether you want to see what time it is, your trip meter your actual uh, mileage or, or the revs dead easy to scroll through the menu um, and the all the switches the buttons fall quite easily to hand a bit of water on the road just taking it a bit steady yeah all the buttons and, and everything fall very easily to hand they're all within reach there's nothing that you have to be a contortionist to use so uh, yeah as far as that the, the ergonomics of the bike that's the word they use isn't it the ergonomics of the bike are actually very, very good. Okay. Again, we're sort of between Doncaster, Rotherham and Barnsley. And yeah, there's a built-up area over to our right. But spectacular countryside. Yeah. There's some, some beautiful roads both for the views and for the actual riding experience itself out this way. So, um, excellent. We're going to head back through Wentworth, Elsica that way, um, on the way home. Roads that we've done quite regularly, but we've not been down this one before in any of my videos. Um, but it's a nice little uh, back road that takes you to the dealership and uh, again away from the dealership to home avoiding some of the uh, heavier traffic so this road can get a bit busy at uh, various times of the day people coming and going to work etc so if there's going to be a bottleneck it's going to be here but just at the moment we're okay get out before this truck comes there we go okay and again do you know what? I don't know what they've done to the bike. I mean, according to the um, service sheet, the balanced throttle bodies and things. And actually, I, I will say that the bike is feeling smoother and a little bit pokier. Uh, the gear change is a lot smoother, so they've done something there, greased it or whatever. So, you know what? I know they don't do a lot on a first service, but it actually feels like they have improved it a little bit. So, yeah, well done Team Roberts. Okay, got to watch the uh, speed humps through here. And up over the bridge. What else can I say about the Triumph? I mentioned the tyres. 
And I say, so far on the roads we've been on from leaving dealership, there haven't been an issue. But I know when I get going through Wentworth, where there was a temporary resurface job done, which has started to wear and wash away, the bike will start to track and follow the, the uh, poor road surface. So, um, as far as comfort goes, the bike is still the most comfortable of all my bikes to ride for any distance. I mean, I don't think that many bikes should want to be sat in the saddle for more than two hours, really, without a break. Uh, but I did a ride on Sunday up over the malls in West Yorkshire. Not a long ride in miles terms, but I was in the saddle for more than two hours and yeah, I was ready for getting off and stretching my legs at the end of it. But I think if I'd have been on the Ducati, um, I'd have been in agony well before that. Because the Ducati's not comfortable on longer rides. So it's great for short scratching, but on the longer rides, it's not as comfortable as this. So, and again, um, one of the criticisms that's thrown at the Scrambler is the, uh, the high level exhaust. It's part of the styling, you know, and it appeals to me. So you make a compromise in some respects, and yes, I've only got short legs, so my legs touching the exhaust most of the time, either the inside of my calf or the inside of my thigh when I put my foot down. The heat is not painful. It, it's it's present. You know it's there, but it's not um, it's not burning your leg at all. On the other hand, on the other side of the engine, the primary drive case. A couple of times I've been riding when it's been warm, and I've had to move my ankle away. All right, yeah, I've got boots on, but ankle away from the engine casing because that gets quite uncomfortably warm. It's at least as warm as the exhaust, shall we say. So you, you just have to be a little bit uh, aware, is probably the best word, of that, uh, of the engine warm at the side of your leg. But then again, it's, I suppose most engines will get warm anyway. You can't uh, point just a criticism solely at the Triumph. All right. Okay, gave the bike its head a little bit there and it pulled very smoothly and very well. Okay, rode into Wentworth. Don't know if you pick it up on the video, but you can see like the grooves in the road where the uh, surface has washed away. And uh, the tyre's not doing too bad at the moment, but you can feel it trying to follow the road. I mean, this, this bit of road is particularly bad, so... Maybe a little bit unfair to the tyres, but, yeah. Okay. Road works. Hopefully they're resurfacing. What else can I say? Miles per gallon, the, the performance of the bike, it's, um, the engine's punchy enough to keep up with most things uh, within reason and uh, without getting you into too much serious uh, temptation to go breaking speed limits. I mean, it, it will, I'm sure, quite easily pull beyond 70 mile an hour, but it accelerates quite quickly up to 70 mile an hour where it's, uh, okay to do so up to 60 mile an hour as quick as anything that I've ridden with anybody I've ridden with so far um, the actual economy of the engine I've been averaging about 67 miles to a gallon according to the onboard computer which I've not done any actual calculations as such so far but uh, it seems to be doing that which equates to if there's a frustration, the, the low, low fuel warning light comes on at about 120 miles and you've still got a gallon left in the tank, approximately, at that, so, or 
just under a gallon, you've still got 40, 50 miles left, even when the low fuel light comes on, which is frustrating. I mean, I, I don't know, some markets might prefer it that way. I, I'm quite happy for it to give me 30 mile warning. Because as soon as it comes on, you get that uh, little voice in the back of your head, you need fuel, you need fuel, you need fuel. And the reality is, you're actually quite safe plenty of uh, range left to find a fuel station without diving for the first one or, or diverting off your route to try and find one so minor criticisms everything so far that I, I can fault the bike on and they're probably the only two to be fair the, the fuel warning light coming on early and the front tyre being a little bit too keen to follow white lines and, and irregularities those are the only two real niggles I've got and they are minor there's nothing Harley bends again they're, they're not the sort of niggles that you'd be thinking about swapping the bike because of you know I mean I, I maybe it was trivial the criticisms I, I aimed at the Harley and the reasons for swapping that um, um, the biggest reason for swapping the Harley there were various little niggles but it was the fact that the ride wasn't comfortable I couldn't have ridden for two hours on the Harley like I did on this on Sunday so uh, the you know the, the riding position suits me perfectly on this bike um, so I've not had to I think I moved the louvers down just a little bit so they were at my preferred sort of angle and also to give me a better view in the right hand mirror which I was struggling to adjust before I moved the, the levers down other than that I haven't touched anything on the bike as far as uh, making it more comfortable for me and it's perfect loving it the engine's got a nice little thud but next to no vibration the exhaust notes a nice burble without being obtrusive uh, several people have commented on how sweet the exhaust note is it sounds like a motorbike without bursting your eardrums so there you go 50 mile an hour road and it, it gets to 50 in seconds and so I'm in fifth gear doing 45 mile an hour at 2500 rpm and at that the engine's not labouring it's it, it the engine's in its sweet spot at 2500 rpm or start of its sweet spot so yeah what more do you want? But again, we're going to get off this main road and take the back roads through Pilly and uh, that way home. That's again, that's what motorcycles are made for. Motorcycles aren't made to travel in straight lines. Maybe one thing I do miss about the Harley, the Harley had very good self cancelling indicators, bless it. And I forget, with the Triumph, they're not. You have to positively cancel them. Even if you turn the engine off and then turn uh, the ignition back on the next day, if you'll turn the ignition off with the indicator flashing, when you turn it back on, the indicator's still flashing. So. Uh, it's just uh, a different habit to learn remembering to cancel when you've made the manoeuvre like we're supposed to under the M1 better than being on it
Rebecca, obviously walking the dogs down there somewhere today. That's our local dog walking lady, the yellow van. Okay, there we are, home. I did say that I'd let you have a look at the tyres. And uh, yeah, I don't know how close we can get to um, seeing. But if you look there, I am very close to the edge. We're not uh, wussing out on uh, on the bends as such. So look at the back one. Yeah, we're uh, reasonably well over on that. So um, we just that front one, just occasionally. Gives you a little bit of concern. Anyway, there we have it. Nice little bimble through the countryside. Weather's perfect. A bit on warm side. Uh, but um, more than happy with what they've done by the, the feel of it so far. Everything seems to be working as good, if not better, than when we uh, dropped it off. So, looking forward to getting lots more miles on it. Um, as again, you've probably picked up. Popper's still enjoying this triumph. So, uh, yeah. We'll get out, we'll do a few more videos and, uh, and see uh, if we can find a few more destinations to share with you. But for now, just remember, I am the Barnsley Biker. Please like, please subscribe. Till next time, I'll see you.